spatial, um, you know, areas of this seamount. Oh my gosh. Squat lobsters are estimated to survive between four and eight years, some species. Four and eight wow. years, a squat lobster hanging out on the same coral. And then wow. it's babies being laid right there, same mm -hmm. coral. Absolutely. I see another uh, unit-sized uh, <laughs> sea star. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. I love this terminology. Yeah. What's the species of uh, sea star that we're, that we're still hoping to sample, potentially? Actually, I don't know if it has a species name. Yeah, a oh, lot okay. of it is a lot um, unidentified species, um, oh, even right. some unidentif unidentified genus or mm. genera. Oh, cool. Um, like uh, Goniastrid in the Goniastrid family and the Astrodinidae family. Mm -hmm. um, those are our main targets. Yeah. Thank you, Kukui. Mahalo. Oh, wow. Means no worries. I wonder if anyone's ever done a little remix of Hakuna Matata, but with <laughs> Aole Blikia. What do you think? <laughs> Never heard it. <laughs> Never heard it. This is pretty amazing. You know, this boulder is another um, example of, of how, you s how these these organisms are trying to get up above oh. the current, even in an area where there already is current. Um, you know, and that's why you can see that the, <laughs> it's probably why this one boulder is so abundant. I mean, I can't even start to count right now the number of corals here. It's pretty amazing. Um, and the different types of corals. Um, as well as the squat lobsters and basket stars and and so on, and, and ophiroids that are that are attached. So it's um, am I seeing hydroids off of this one coral right here? Might be, yeah. Looks a lot like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can we wow. zoom in. Hey, Sammy. Wow. <laughs> Asako, are you getting this? <laughs> oh, amazing. Oh, looks like we've got oh, some parazoanthids. Is that a snail down there? That is uh, definitely a snail. Don't little, know what kind of snail, of but here. I'm always hoping out, uh, hoping now for the tumbling snails. It's a deep sea salad, huh, Robert? It's uh -huh. got just a little bit of everything. Yeah. yeah. This is what I call ocean salad. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, big crab. Oh, wow, yeah. Look at that. Mm. It's amazing. Several different um, colonizing type of organisms on that one. Our, our mm. biologists, uh, our biologists ashore are uh, big, big fans of today's dive. And <laughs> I can't blame them. This is spectacular. This is amazing, yeah. Stunning. Thanks goes to the volcano and the rocks for making it all possible. <laughs> Absolutely. And the currents. Yeah. And the currents too, that's true. For better or for worse, for us. Yeah. <laughs> and Tina just mentioned that there we're seeing a lot of zoanthids on here. Okay, I was starting yeah. to wonder. Yes, yeah. Cool. It's pretty stunning, so awesome. Thank you so much. Some kind of cool fish up on Atalanta's camera. Oh, yeah. Can't tell what it is. Just hovering there. Oh, yeah. That's wild. Huh. Awesome. We can, yeah, All thank right. you. Zoom out. Robert, what's your take on this current? How's it How's it treating you? Uh, it's better now that we were kind of up on the top. Oh, great. It was, awesome. like going, it was going like right over the edge. Right over yeah. the ridge. You were a yeah. little exposed, huh? Right. Paddling to moving along here. Yeah, as it flattens out here, um, would it be possible to increase our speed a tiny bit, or are we still yeah. okay? No, we could go faster. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Do we do we want to start just tracking a constant line? You think, or um, could 
Maybe maybe we still do, still do uh, some large hops. Okay. But yeah, we'll, cool. we'll kick up speed a tiny okay. bit. Just in case you're uh, just now turning in, tuning in, uh, this is Nautilus Live, uh, live on the website and on YouTube. You can come over to Nautilus Live and uh, share your comments and questions with us. Um, I'm Daniel Kinzer, Science Communication Fellow, and uh, we love hearing your stories. We're on the sixth dive of the Ala Amwana Kaiuli expedition on board Nautilus NA 154 in Papahanaumokuakea. It's a previously unmapped and unexplored seamount, seamount number 17. And um, it's uh, been quite the treat. It is delivering. It's definitely delivering. All right, so we're seeing a little bit of sediment here. Oh. And uh, yeah, well, it looks like some uh, skeletons of possibly some old sponges. As well as the uh, this this dense array of uh, uh, coral community that we've been following for a while. Yeah, I think I saw a couple of crinoids hanging around hey. down there too. Ah, yeah. Good spot. And a fish. <laughs> yeah, look at that guy. Yeah. So this is the part of the dive that we're transitioning toward, where we are um, hoping to uh, uh, see some more fish. Hey, buddy. And uh, at some point, we're uh, expecting to see some trawling damage. Is that another Look at human right impacts. I think it's a sea cucumber. Is it? Yeah. Can we zoom in? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. that's right. That is another little cuke. Um, look at that. Oh, it's got feet. <laughs> Got the tube feet. Tube feet. Love the sea cucumber tube feet. Amazing way to get around. Mm -hmm. Incredible adaptation. Yeah, and I can't remember if synalactids have feet like that. They have the, the three, um, the three on them, but I can't remember if they've got tube feet. I don't think they do. I know alasopodids do, but yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, we can keep moving. So the feet uh, at the at the one end uh, on the left are those specialized? Those actually, those actually that was the mouth. Oh, that was the mouth. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it's the mouth. Um, the mouth have specialized tentacles that look very similar to the feet, but they actually right, but they have, have more like they have digits. Yes, exactly. Phalanges. Mm -hmm. That's probably not the appropriate <laughs> term for those, but no. And it's pretty interesting. Fun They've actually say. done some studies. They're very specialized. The mouth. The mouth parts. They look like um, it, yeah. Yeah, and so it can actually like you can you can get multiple species that you're like, how are these living together? They have to be utilizing the exact same resources, but actually, because of their mouth parts, they're using slightly different resources. Huh. Which is wild. That is wild. <laughs> yeah. Nature be wildin'. Nature do be wildin'. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we certainly uh, hope if you're watching at home or in the office or at school, um, you do appreciate uh, uh, just how spectacular. What an okay, incredible. Okay, that's definitely a fish. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Val. Well done. <laughs> Not a rock. Not a rock. <laughs> well, and I, I, I honestly, I couldn't see it very clearly, so I honestly thought that sea cucumber was a uh, fish, too. Oh, you I never did. Never know. <laughs> never know. We have Eagle Eye Robert over here. Sure do. It's like maybe a little bit of hyaloclastite peeping out here and there. So we must be getting close to a vent again. What was that? that you, what were the words you just said? <laughs> <laughs> hyaloclastite. Ah, right. Of course. Hyaloclastite. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, can, can you explain what that is? Um, so uh, that is a combination volcanic and sedimentary rock, uh, also creatively called volcano, uh, volcano sedimentary in the jargon. Wait, I'm sorry. Wouldn't that make it both, me I mean, if it's volcanic, there's like one thing I know about geology, right? That there's like <laughs> three types of rocks. It's like sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous. There are a couple of gray margins in there. Oh, well... 
God, just ruined the whole paradigm. Right. Okay, so you're, so you're telling me that this is like a combination? Yeah. Oh, man. Okay, great. Now you have to... <laughs> That's the problem with science you is gotta update uh, your priors. Yeah. That the more you learn, the more you realize there are these gray areas in our categories, mm. and Imagine. not everything fits neatly into a bin. Yes. But yeah, it's a volcano sedimentary rock. Um, <laughs> just wait till I tell you about spatiotemporal things. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> um, here. But yeah, that's a uh, uh, it's it's a sign of a very energetic. Uh, environment and we, we assume that, th that these deposits are formed relatively close to uh, uh, the volcanic vent that's erupting that made them and uh, oh, wow. they're interpreted as uh, lava that's getting jetted out of a uh, volcanic vent and up into the water column and uh, oh, uh, with, with enough energy that uh, the lava gets basically torn to shreds and then it um, sort of settles back out of the uh, uh, the water column and as builds sediment. up like as a sediment, yeah. Oh, that's cool. And it's very porous and very torn apart and it has a very high surface area to volume ratio, which makes it uh, very susceptible to alteration. So it, it, it's, it's, it was probably originally once the same rock type as uh, a lot of what we're uh, surveying uh, here, you know, with the uh, same as the pillow basalts and the lava flows, the sheet flows the dikes, but um, it, it gets more readily altered. It, it stops looking like a basalt or a day site or something. Uh, uh -huh. uh, and yeah, when, uh, we, we do sample these occasionally and uh, uh, it comes up as this uh, sort of pale yellow or uh, kind of brownish sometimes. Uh, uh, very, very easy to cut uh, uh, kind of rock. So yeah, if, I, if I'm cutting open a rock and it, it slices very easily. Um, I pretty much know even before I have it open that it's a hyaloclastite. Can you say that one more time, Dr. Vell? Oh, cutting the, rock, the rocks it's open? A, it's a hy hy hyaloclastite. Hyaloclastite. Yeah. Uh, and is this, I know it's, I know that that, that lava getting kind of torn to bits, not exactly the same as the kind of ash clouds we experience above water with volcanoes erupting, but similar kind of concept, like this similar big plume coming up and then settling down. Yeah, so, so, so think kind of like when uh, Kilauea is erupting and it, it uh, you sometimes get fountaining. Yeah. It's, it's uh, broadly similar to that. It's just, you know, submarine environment. So there, there are a few physical, you know, the physics are slightly different. Yeah. But um, yeah, similar, similar kind of energy and uh, 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 kind of uh, concept. That's yes. the word I was looking for. Some of those deposits right from the volcanoes above the surface, like on land, will, you know, wind will kind of blow, scatter a lot of that dust. But I imagine in the water, the pressure and the, and the density of the water is going to kind of somehow trap a little bit more of that volcanic material so that the sediment's a little bit more durable, a little bit more likely to sort of form layers of rock. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, because it, it does, it does uh, lithify. You know, okay, it does. Yeah. It does turn into a rock. Yeah. Um, whereas you're you're exactly correct about some of the fountaining deposits uh, that uh, Kilauea produces, for example. Some of those, uh, yeah, they they get blown away. You know, they they don't necessarily uh, show up in the long-term rock record. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have a good friend who works at a Hawaiian Volcanoes Observatory, and last time. Uh, Last time I was in Hilo and uh, got to chat with her, we were talking about just how ephemeral some of these deposits are and and how we might be missing some of those stories from those ephemeral deposits uh, uh, from the volcanic history of uh, uh, the Big Island volcanoes. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because yeah, uh, like you know, you, you can get these these beds where you have uh, pretty pretty thick deposits of things like Pele's tears. Yeah, but uh, like Pele's uh, Pele's hair Pele's is hair, yeah. is pretty transient, and uh, um, what what's colloquially known as uh, golden pumice, um, uh, we call it uh, reticulite. Um, it's a technical term for it, but golden pumice sounds cooler. <laughs> uh, uh, reticulites are very ephemeral yeah. in uh, uh, the eruptive record of Hawaiian volcanoes too, because they're just so light and they're so fragile. 
I know as well, we get quite uh, concerned back home when, uh, especially over on Moko Kiave on the Big Island with the eruption, making sure we're not inhaling some of these, uh, you know, too much of this material. Oh, right. Uh, yep. gets thrown into the air and blown The last thing it, you want away. are silica fragments in your lungs. Yeah. That's That's nasty business there. Yeah. That's the longest word in the English language. Oh. Numano ultra microscopic silico volcanoconiosis. Wow. <laughs> hey, Robert, well done. Oh, nice. Wow. Nice to meet you, Mary Poppins. That was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was cool. You're going to have to write that one down for us later, Robert. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so one of the unique things about uh, reticulites, these golden pumices, is they, they're. Uh, they're associated with uh, episodes of high fountaining. So like, think like when Kilauea, uh, when, when Pele gets uh, very temperamental and sends lava like a good kilometer up into the air, mm -hmm. just spectacular fountains. Uh, there's gas dissolved in these lavas that bubbles out and they, they bubble out so much that uh, they, they develop this very delicate, like 3D honeycomb style texture. So oh, it's wow. sort of like nature's aerogel oh. in a way. And it's, yeah, it's very fragile, so it, it doesn't stick around very long. It's amazing. It's something else. 8 to 12, just want you to know you've, you've delivered one of our um, amazing uh, fellow explorers online the best dive they've seen in the last three months that they've been oh, watching wow. ROV live stream. So, Aww. you know, mm -hmm. front row, you especially. That's, uh, that's for you guys. Incredible yes, work. Thank you, guys. Uh, amazing. Mahalo, Andrea. Very kind compliment. <laughs> Thank you, Seamount17. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Who has more than earned a name. <laughs> and to our amazing back row, Dr. Val, watch lead, Virginia, uh -huh. coming in with so much knowledge about corals and, and sponges and all of their obligatory or not obligatory uh, associates and uh, really appreciate that Kukui getting this all in the record amazing thank you and Mahina incredible Ike and Manao as well mm -hmm. Mahalo everyone and Mahalo Dan for facilitating all these beautiful conversations as well Oh, Seriously. I just am loving being here for this ride with you guys this is awesome Cool. Are we starting to see a lot more of the stock sponges and uh, some of these uh, kind of whip corals? Are these? Not sure. About I think you are sponges, seeing more of the whips. Yeah, these yeah. are these are um, unbranched bamboos. Beautiful. Yeah. Sorry, we both started talking there. <laughs> no, no, you're good. Absolutely. You know. Um, it is interesting, we are seeing, we have seen a slight shift in the community um, to, to these, um, a little bit a little bit sparser, only because below was so so incredibly dense with yeah, This um, is still taxa. dense. So this is still pretty dense, but we are seeing um, uh, more of those uh, unbranched uh, bamboo corals um, along with the vibrant yellow and uh, pale orange Enolopsamias. Um, and it does look like we've got a, a Walteria sponge there near Big the laser one. lights. Um, or it used to, or at least a Euplectelid sponge. Um, I'm feeling like uh, maybe a little fewer uh, Aridogorgia and Chrysogorgids. They're still yeah. there, just yeah. maybe less. There's also a rosella. It kind of looked like a like a small urchin, like a round circular one. I saw it a couple more times during the dive, but it's one of those um, circular ones with a hole on top. It has all these spicules coming out, like urchin spines. Mm. And that was a sponge. Yeah. Oh whoa. I think so. I, cause I don't. That's awesome. Cause there. Uh, I should make sure. <laughs> Yeah, I thought there were urchins at first, and then I was just scrolling through the peripheral um, taxa on oceanexplorer.noah.gov, and uh, then I found these. Oh, yeah. you 
you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Rosalide. Rosalide. I think they actually are still urchins. They're, they were the very small circles with very long... Oh, I saw those too, yeah, okay, but I saw a couple of these hidden throughout, like, oh, little yeah. cracks and crevices behind. Oh. Um, they kind of look like urchins that are covered in sediment, but then you look at the spicules, and they kind of look like urchin spines too, but they're a little bit, um, a little bit more, and a little bit, um, shorter. I do, okay, I do, like, great. some urchins do have, Fantastic. like, shorter spines too, but yeah. I, I have a feeling it's that. Idea, That's awesome. Wrong, Great observation. Thank, thank you. Oh, thank you. Cool, cool. Dr. Val, one viewer wants to know, what kind of lava do you lava the most? Uh, <laughs> I love almost lavas. But, um, I think I actually have two. Um, on land, I think Paley's dreads are awesome. <laughs> It's a, uh, it's another one of those uh, uh, subaerial sorts of uh, 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 eruptive deposits that you get, where it's, it's like a, a more viscous form of uh, Pele's hair. Um, you, you get uh, more more viscous lava that gets drawn out as it gets uh, hurled through the air, and uh, sometimes you can find these at places like uh, Ocean Entry on Big Island, and uh, yeah, they look a little bit like dreadlocks, so it's. Yeah. Um, uh, a very accurate descriptor, but sometimes you get these very intricate, twisted shapes uh, that they take on uh, while they're cooling, because they're they're still they're still uh, uh, viscous, malleable um, yeah. in the air, and then and then as they cool, uh, those shapes get locked in. Oh, cool! And, uh, and it's it, lo it looks to my eye, looking at them, that uh, that often happens before you know that that cooling and that. Uh, yeah that glass transition happens before they even hit the ground. Oh my goodness, that's and, amazing. Yeah, they, they get such ex spectacular forms. And I love it when they get really delicately twisted. We're talking about <clears throat> half an inch, an inch in diameter, uh, or long? They're uh, pretty they're thick, huh? A they couple can be inches. Pretty, pretty long, usually a few inches long, half an inch to an inch or so wide on average, yeah, although there's yeah. a lot of variation in that size. Oh, and they're cool. usually kind of like, kind of kind of planar. I want to so go look for like some now. Side. That's yeah, really it's, cool. it's, it's well worth it. I, I don't know what ocean entry access looks like these days, yeah. but um, yeah, if you can get out there, you can usually find some nestled here and there. Okay. So submarine, um, I, I I think I like pillow basalts. Um, you know, it's kind of cool looking at them uh, uh, when they're in place on volcanoes. They're kind of kind of wormy, tubey looking things, mm -hmm. and they it's just such a such a wild morphology to look at. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You, there's some really good examples of that um, in the Northeast Lao Basin, where there are young volcanoes, and you just get these these just ridiculously cool examples of intact pillow flows. But when they break up, um, you if you're sampling those off, of, say, a, a tallest slope, off of a deep fault in a in a seamount, you bring up that dredge bag, and uh, you you get a bunch of these wedge-shaped um, uh, fragments of rock and you cut them open and you just get these spectacular uh, 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 just patterns of uh, vesiculation. Uh, and they can be radial or concentric. Um, yeah, the, the bubbles that form in some of these. Sometimes you get uh, these beautiful ancaramites, which are uh, rock so geologists uh, like me are always looking for that have uh, olivine and clinopyroxene crystals in them. Sometimes if you're really lucky, you run into an extraordinarily well-preserved rock, especially, you know, looking at stuff that's Cretaceous in age like this, where you still get little bits of the what was originally the glass quench rind on those pillow basalts. Oh, wow. You still see little tiny bits of stuff that's still glass. When you cut it which open. Which is very rare. Oh, yeah. beautiful. Like, glass is not a chemically stable material. Yeah. It has a very chaotic, uh, non-crystalline structure. Yeah. So um, that's, that's one of the easiest things for uh, uh, alteration to change. Yeah compared to something crystalline like a clinopyroxene. And every now and again, you just find these little patches of glass that survive. And cool. those um, in the right hands can reveal some really interesting, just really fascinating, unique information about um, like uh, certain volatiles that may still be trapped in the glass and uh, yeah, some other information that otherwise we can't get. Oh, that's incredible. They hold secrets, secrets. In Very the, rare in secrets. The glass. Oh. I like this. Sounds like uh, this might need to make it into isotope stories as well. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Secrets of the glass. Yeah. 
Yeah. Let me, let, yeah, me put that, actually, let me put that on my notes. We actually got one sample on 138 last year. I cut it open and found a little bit of fresh glass in the rind. Oh, cool. So that was like a big deal. I showed everybody who, who would even listen to me for a second. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for sharing the lava that you love the most. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. So we were making uh, a transit up toward the uh, flat top of the seamount, where we're going to uh, uh, try to try to find and document some uh, trawling damage that has been known to uh, be present on top of uh, on top of this platform. At the moment, we're still mostly in rocky substrate, but we're expecting to see a transition over toward uh, uh, more sedimentation. Just about any time. Approaching uh, just an hour left in our um, world's best, 8 to 12, on this sixth dive, the Ala Amwana Kaiuli expedition and uh, where we've been transported uh, deep into a uh, portal mm -hmm. uh, that uh, to be presented with this incredible gift. Um, much more than uh, we deserve, certainly more than I deserve. Many other folks in the room been working hard for a long time to gain their access to this very sacred place, but uh, love being here with you all and uh, includes all of you exploring with us at home. We've got uh, folks tuning in from, of course, the United States, uh, United Kingdom, Germany, Canada, uh, all across Europe, Poland, Norway, Italy, uh, also Hungary, France, Denmark, but also from across the Pacific, uh, Kingdom of Hawaii, Australia, America, Samoa, Japan. So just uh, wonderful to be deep sea travelers with all of you and thanks for joining us yeah many thanks for joining us and sticking with us that's right we zoom in what's going on here oh what'd you find Robert those Barnacles? Are they forams? What have we got here? Those are polyps, little. No. Uh, worms. I can't tell. Are Where they the bones? Fruit Loops that keep disappearing <laughs> so quickly? <laughs> That's where all the Fruit Loops went. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Wait, that looks that like some coral? sort of coral. Yeah. It's kind of spreading okay. out over the. Oh. Yeah. Virginia, you mentioned this, right? Uh, she'll, she stepped out for a sec. Yeah, she'll be right back. Okay. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like the, the stolen we're used to uh, uh, seeing. It's well, much flatter. At, look at all those polyps that you can see. Almost. Uh, 
They almost look like little. There's a little bit of sediment uh, here anemones. too. <laughs> I don't know. Huh. Oh, what interesting creatures. Um, or still cam. Get a couple of stills of this while we're here. We are at um, just below 1,100 meters deep, um, nearly three quarters of a mile beneath the surface. Um, looking at what uh, some on the internet think might be spaghettios. <laughs> oh dear! You heard, you heard <laughs> Fruit Loops. You heard Fruit Loops coming from the control van. We've been wondering where they've all been going. And uh, cool little sponge over there too. I just found it funny that they kept showing up on random spots in that the social was deck, funny, too. That was <laughs> They've got a mind of their own, those Fruit Loops. They sure do. I believe they have legs. <laughs> You're probably right about that. It's called Jacob Bonnie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have legs called Jacob Bonnie, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Jacob, so hope you're listening downstairs, my friend. Probably sleeping, yeah. but I uh, hope you're listening. That was a good one. So that's the culprit. <laughs> <laughs> the plot thickens. I think it was yesterday. And Rob went to go sit down. He's like, why is there fruit loose everywhere? <laughs> Probably something we will not see on the Nautilus again in this race. <laughs> Actually, there's a little bit of fruit loops left in the last container. I saw, I believe I saw before I came up for a watch. So I thought there was a stash yesterday, but I've not been paying attention today. I think that's the stash that's in there right now. Yeah, um, probably. So I'm about to play some on raw paper scissors for that. <laughs> You're <now>. on. <laughs> uh -oh. Are you kidding? It's first come, first serve on this ship. People oh. have, uh, well, I know. The there's cookies, no. and I saw Rob got some sort of cookies. coral. So who gave me the cookies today? Yeah, yeah. Who no. gave me the cookies? Oh, Robert got cookies today? He did. I so I got a gift of day. cookies. That's, That's why we were blessed Actually, I got two gifts time. of cookies. Oh, yeah. my yeah. God. All right. Yes. <laughs> Somebody went into the tool room and wrapped them up and everything, put his name on them. Wow. Oh. Yeah. That's, That's awesome. That's mighty nice. <laughs> <laughs> See, Robert, despite all the things we say, we do love you. <laughs> <laughs> It is a privilege. Right, you deserve so those cookies, so my we friend. Didn't, we didn't get any feedback on what we're looking at here? Uh, our biologist got back and... Uh, Virginia is about to tell us. I mean, they, they just look like small anemones. Oh, You don't hey. think it's that um, coral that you talked about? I guess about? that. But they're all kind of like, you can kind of see they have like a network I mean, going. They could, they could be still in inference, but I, I'm having a hard time to determine. See, they're not all connected. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, like they're... Oh, so sorry. here's the connected ones down here. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 these ones could be, but it actually. Oh wait, no, those look like. Wait. Oh, okay, oh, actually, yeah. these ones do look like they're connected, like they are still yeah. different, but not all of them are. I can see tentacles that look very really anemone-like. Well, that would yeah. be kind of weird that you have some. That they look exactly the same. They just don't yeah. have the. Network. But see, it looks like see these ones here are not connected to anything. So that's why yeah. I'm like, ah, they might not be still different. Um, yeah, Do you think somebody that. could have, or something could have fed off of the connective tissue of these um, oh, what possible yeah. solid oh, I don't know. Like that yeah. like these brittle these star, maybe? Yeah. Maybe. Uh, oh, we got I got too many tentacles oh. to be an octocor coral. Yeah. yeah, they do. That's so uh, it's yeah. probably an anemone. Okay. Whoever said that, I like okay. that idea. Great. We've got uh, deep sea Sherlock Kukui over there. Nah. <laughs> that was it. I like this <laughs> awesome. idea, Kukui. Okay. Murder mystery. <laughs> Look, there's, yeah, there's that, the, is that a bigger that one, one? There is bigger too. Yeah. Is so that it, the same species though? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It looks very similar, but it, that doesn't. Oh, mean oh that hey, it is. we got a buddy hanging out. Yeah. Right back here. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a buddy. Well, cool. Beady eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, little beady eyes. Just you can see it actually. <laughs> yeah, you can. Don't no, look at me like that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, awesome. All right, Adam, moving, moving on. on. Yeah, moving let's, on. let's move on. Interesting mystery spot. Unsolved yes. mysteries of Great. the deep sea. And too many of those. Mm -hmm. Not enough researchers. No, yeah. If you're hearing this and you're looking for, uh, <laughs> if, if you're looking for a marine sort of career, please, we need you. <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. 
Absolutely. And if you're looking for the footage, it's marked at UTC 0858. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is very stunning to yeah. be a part of. We're it's so cool. Oops, sorry. No, no, you're good. What? What? Yeah. Um, I was just saying we're we're cruising along at pace here, trying to mm -hmm. trying to get on track and see what we can see. Ooh, yeah. another unit of a sea star. <laughs> I think we need to make a unit. A I think we need to make unit the official unit of measurement for sea stars. <laughs> I like that idea. Should we? That sea star is one half unit. <laughs> <laughs> do we have an actual size though for these units? <laughs> no. Like, do, it's a unit? unitless yeah. unit. What, what is what is the unit of a unit? Like, a what unit. is that representative of? A unit. I usually, when people ask how tall I am, I often say I'm one Dan. <laughs> That's all you're going to get. Robert, we have someone interested in building their own submarine at home. And I thought, hey, who better to ask than oh, Robert wow. Waters? Uh, oh, boy. What, you want to you take? Actually, there's another Waters who's much more, uh, much better at that. Oh, Scott yeah. Scott Waters. Scott Waters. Not related, but he took an old Pisces submarine and uh, rebuilt it, and he's doing science now in the uh, Canary Islands. Oh, wow. wow. Tenerife, yeah. Um, I'll put it in a word uh, that there are some small, uh, like, civilian, I guess you could call them, uh, available ROVs. There's Blue Rov, uh, Deep Trek, and there's a few other ones out there, and oh, yeah. you can find them on eBay relatively Wow. That's, why, that's why I love the younger generation. They're like, why build it? Just buy it on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Ship it right to you. And actually, yeah, there, there are some uh, cheaper ones actually on Amazon. <laughs> but, I mean, it depends how much you're willing to spend, too. Yeah, and what depth rating are after? Um, the Deep Trek is the one I've worked with before. It's it's all carbon fiber, so take that in consideration. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's a note for me. Yeah, and then the Blue ROV, they're... Uh, the, the problems with them is always the programming. The, they've always had a kind of like faulty program, but they're on the cheaper side. I think for the whole system, for the, uh, for the laptop they provide and stuff like that, uh, I think it's like three grand, four grand. Uh, oh, wow, that's a lot cheaper All than right. I would have expected. So how, how deep can they go? Because all of a sudden I was just that's, realizing yeah, that. Yeah, that would be like a 150 meter one maybe. Yeah. yeah. Well, but that could be really useful for people studying, um, what is it called? Mesophotic corals, right? Yeah. Mesophotic corals are what between like 60 meters and like 150 meters. Yeah, they're um, about. And it's like too. It's like a little bit too deep for most. For like you know most divers, although there are some specialized divers that can go into those those depths. But um, but it's also like rather. It seems a little shallow for a, like an ROV. Yeah. Like a, you know like are you are you gonna take. Hercule, that's a unit. That's <laughs> a <laughs> unit. Wow. That, by the way, it looks Zoom like in. one of those. That's, a, that's one Dan right there. Yeah. <laughs> that's one Dan. That's sea stars of Dan. One leg is 10 centimeters. So that's oh. pretty cool. Yeah. That's amazing. Beast mode over here. So, uh, <laughs> love this guy. That is awesome. enormous. This, yeah. This friend. But, um, yeah, and so with mesophotic corals, right, like it's hard to get funding to use something like you know, an ROV like this, which is rated to like, what, what is it, 4,000 meters or something? Something like that. You know, I've yeah. actually done that. Um, I, you can get, people have, and they <laughs> can get funding, but it's, it's very difficult, you it know? Is. But if you could get something that is similar, but not quite as expensive, yeah. that seems actually far more, um, so, so I participated in a cruise on the Falcor in 2017 that went out to Penguin Bank off of Molokai mm -hmm. and went after a, uh, a specific depth of uh, uh, corals for some, uh, you know, some climatological work. And um, we took Sebastian down and actually had problems uh, keeping Sebastian from getting too yes. warm, which was yes. one of the biggest challenges of that. That yeah, out water. of out of everything, it was literally yeah. keeping Sebastian cool enough. That's not a good design. Yeah. 
So yep. I have to make new electronics for Hercules, and one of the one of the big has to do is, is to make sure it doesn't burn up itself sitting on deck. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, in the sun. Got to so. keep yeah. it cool. It's yeah, part of the so design challenge. Yeah, because the current Hercules, we can leave it out on deck all day, run it, and it doesn't overheat. That's awesome. Yeah, as, a, as an elder in the room, I'd say uh, go back, DIY it. You know, look up some plans, test it out. Were, were they talking about a submarine submarine? Or yeah, submarine ROV? submarine. They don't yeah. want just an, any old ROV. Yeah. They they want to yeah. go down. I, I think uh, be careful, but uh, do it yourself. Have a buddy. Yeah. And trust and verify. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> trust and verify, absolutely. And get some teammates, you know, do it together, build yeah, a team. I don't know about making a human-occupied submarine in your backyard. Come on. <laughs> Says the guy who took the <laughs> Sears air compressor and a garden hose yeah. down. Jeez. Go, go scuba diving. Just Whatever you do, make make the cabin spherical, not cylindrical, please. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Please. Uh -huh. yes. A sphere is a much stronger shape. Yeah, I love Good it. Good old isometric kind of shape. Plenty of learning. Start in your pool. I think Alvin's sphere is actually like within ten thousandths of the perfectly spherical. Wow. Wow. wow that's, incre that's incredible. Oh, wow. One sphere to rule them all. <laughs> yeah. Is Got this a fish that we've seen yet? No, I don't think it's so. It's cool think looking. So. Uh, it doesn't seem to have a dorsal, but it's uh, got two big pectoral yeah. It could be, you know what? I want to call everything a synaphobranchid eel. I don't know why. I just do. <laughs> but I want to call this a synaphobranchid eel, or it's a halosaur. Oh. Those are my two, some of my two favorite fish. So, um, but I could actually look it up. Like halosaurs have larger eyes. It, yeah, I think it has a different facial shape too, right, Amber? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it's got the tail, which is correct. Yeah. Um, um, but it it looks um, more like a snapperbranket eel to me. Yeah. First try, right. then. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's got a touch of a curved tip to its tail as well, which is kind of interesting. Beautiful. Speaking of uh, eels and fish, a uh, number of viewers are, you know, heard us talking about trawling. We're a little surprised that that trawling takes place this deep, but uh, I think most people are. Oh, um, but yeah. but trawlers trawling go takes, very takes very place deep. Deeper. Yeah, deeper really? deeper than the oh, summit of this sea mount often in the ocean, and uh, yeah, it's uh, we have not found any evidence of trawling yet. Um, but we're also still... Well, we did see that net around the pear gorges earlier. We did. We, I, I heard that it didn't appear to be some. It, it appeared to be something that wouldn't have been used for, well, maybe for not deep for, trawling, maybe for not bottom for trawling, trawling. But it, it definitely was... Um, that is that is an anthropogenic impact absolutely, of fishing absolutely. and exploitation in the area. You know, unfortunately. Yeah, nets sink. They drift down. They, right. they end up on the bottom, and we we witnessed it. Yeah, and this isn't the first time. Unfortunately, one of the things that we saw was the um, several broken branches on one of the really large old paracorchids around here too, which is um, rather sad. This looks like a transition. Beautiful stalked crinoid there. Um, we've got some more of those, some different chrysogorgias coming in. It's um, like a bottle brush, really long And the, it looks, this is interesting. We're at 1,100 meters and those um, analopsamias have shrunk in size. Some of them, but ones within our field of view. That, so is, that is another thing to 
to remember is we are only seeing a tiny portion of this. I'm looking at the manganese crust, we're seeing a uh, bit of a change here to what I'm more familiar with seeing on the tops of the seamount. So mm. we're probably more or less out of the uh, igneous sequence here. And I'm hoping we start seeing some sediments pretty soon. Awesome. Oh, we've got, that's one of those long legged I think, Caribbean shrimps as well that we just passed. Um, nice anemone. Some folks uh, suggesting that was a cusk eel, which is actually ah. a kind of fish, yes. but, uh, but uh, called an eel. Ophid a cusk eel. Ophididae, yeah. And uh, looking at photos, I could, I could definitely see that ID mm -hmm. yeah. working out. I think some of them, um, oh look, and that's so interesting. Look, just to the right, we've got those larger um, analopsamias again. Seen a couple sea cucumbers here and there. Pretty sure they are not fish. <laughs> <laughs> Full us once. <laughs> well, ever since uh, sea cucumbers versus nudibranchs, I'm very cautious with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Until I can see some detail. <laughs> right. No, it's. I couldn't see that rhino for. <laughs> oh, the image of that uh, that one that was maybe thought to be a sea cucumber, but. It's definitely a nudibranch. Uh, that was very cool. That image is super beautiful. Yeah. I'm sure it'll go out on Instagram eventually. Or TikTok, or whatever the kids are looking at these days. <laughs> this yeah. looks like flatfish terrain to me. <laughs> I've seen them look in this kind of terrain before. Mm -hmm. What kind of terrain was that, Robert? The flat, the flatfish, the flounder. Oh, flatfish the, terrain, yeah. yeah. Okay, so keep an eye out. Could probably be very oh. well camouflaged. Yeah, it just looks huh? like what I've seen before. There's one. No We're actually just kidding. I don't cool. know. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> now you're going to see them everywhere. Don't they? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like all the stump bears in Alaska. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that flounder that we saw earlier that would definitely cool. be hard to spot here. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's actually a couple of um, flatfish species that yeah. will they they can change the when they're a juvenile their color will change based on the type of um, the color of the sediments. Really? Wow. Yeah, I believe the the study specifically was uh, with halibut, um, Pacific, huh. Pacific halibut. Um, Match the habitat bottom up. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Whether it was like a light sandy or, or like a dark sort of like this. Um, Makes sense. If you if you raised how these small, very small halibut, I'm talking, you know, a couple inches, maybe four inches, um, in the two different habitats, you would have two different, two very different looking halibut. It was, it was very interesting. Very interesting. So. Explain through natural selection, right? That's just that's the that's giving them an advantage for survival and reproduction because they're well, yeah, that better kind of, able to camouflage. That kind of plasticity, that ability to um, you know sort of blend in a little bit more, um, just means that it's it's their their shape would be more broken up because um, one of the things that halibut do is they have very they have splotchy colors. Um, and so their shape would be a little bit more uh, cut up, and so they'd be more difficult to spot. Um, by hey, there's one. And, um, right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh my yep. goodness. Yeah. 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 Oh, and that one looks, that looks like a different coloration and slightly different yeah, shape than the last one we on saw that, as well. Yep. Awesome. Very cool. <laughs> right on cue, buddy. Thank you. Well done. Thank you for hey, the seamount uh, has been a gift, and it continues to be a gift. It is, and it does. Wow. This, this flounder's on to us. He's like, all right, fine. That's, that's my cue. Here we go. Wow. Let me lay right here. Wow, that is stunning. Those patterns yeah. are gorgeous. And you're right, different different coloration. Yeah, and would it you does mind some turning the lights off? The la I'm sorry, the lasers. <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> every time. It does sort of match the tone of these Please rocks. Please never turn really the well. lights off if I ask for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's also getting pretty late. That is stunning. Beautiful. And so individual fish won't change their coloration, but they will pass on, is that right? Or they will? 
Um, you know, I th I think I think that study was really that these small these small juveniles mm. can actually woah their you color will change based on where they're oh, raised. Oh, that's different. But that's it's cool. it's not like not like chameleon change, right? right? right, right We're right, talking right. sort of subtler changes. Yeah. Very yeah, more like, like just like the, the types of pigments. Now. That's pretty awesome. You know, um, yeah, but then as it gets older, they they yeah. sort of morph into the same. So, I'm trying to awesome. think of like the sensory loops that are involved in that. So what information are, is the organism taking in and how is what what's the feedback loop? How yeah. is it responding to that? Really fascinating. That's yeah, pretty cool. I don't know. I don't know. Pretty cool. I mean, it could be something that happens as they settle. Yeah. Off to the sea floor. So awesome. Thank you. What a beautiful fish. Mm-hmm. Oh, and there's a cucumber right next to it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can we get those laser lights back on? Yep. Could, could that have been a, a, a target for folks who were trawling? Is some of these flatfish on these Absolutely. sea mounts? Absolutely. Um, well, I mean, okay. So flatfish is something that is trawled for elsewhere. Uh -huh. um, I have heard of, of people um, trawling for bottom fish. Um, they'll have that like as their AIS login. Um, <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Uh, well, yeah, because so, so for those of you who don't know, who are listening in, AIS is this, um, like, I forgot what it stands for, but it's this, it's this uh, program that uh, a lot of vessels utilize um, all around the world, um, and it tracks their position as well as the positions of others around them, and so it's, it's actually very useful um, in... Uh, Maintaining communication, maintaining proper distances, mm -hmm. um, keeping track of where your, the other boats are, um, um, and uh, but it also, you know, it it it's uh, each vessel can put unique information into it, like like the name of the vessel, what it's doing, um, and what what type of gear it's using, um, and that can also be really important for. Um, I, I worked in, in the Bering Sea and sometimes there would be vessels that were like long liners that had gear out in the same region where there were also trawlers. And so it actually kind of aided in that communication between the trawling vessels and the long lining vessels and making sure that the trawling vessels didn't actually run over gear, etc. cetera. Um, so it can be really useful. Um, Um, and so you can find the information about what some of these are utilizing. Oh, we've got another sea star, star yeah, feeding, star feeding on that event. bamboo, yeah. And um, another one. Oh, and another one. Awesome. So you can actually look into look into what is what some of these uh, what some of the trawlers and and fishers are actually targeting. And um, one of the recent ones that we stumbled across uh, last year when we were out on those um, Emperor Seamounts was that there were some that were fishing for bottom fish, um, okay. which is, they could include flatfish. Um, I think it probably is more the grenadier, um, as well as um, uh, any anything else that Do it you get things really. like cod that come this deep? Um, I don't know of any true cods that come this, this far south, actually. This far south, sure, yeah, they'd be much further north. I'm just curious if they go, um, if they hang out in depths that are uh, around a thousand meters, deep. not really. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think they're this deep. Um, when when I was in Alaska, one of the things that we fished for that was pretty pretty deep like this. There were redfish, oh. um, and then there were also um, some uh, some flatfish species actually that would would get fished for. Yeah. Hmm. Wow, such a dramatic shift in the... Yeah, uh, it really mm -hmm. is. Yeah, there's just not yeah. much here. This might be a... Do we think this uh, terrain will be consistent for a little while? Do you think we um, could... It seems to be. Uh, yeah, if, if we want to kind of transit through here, uh, that would be fine with back row. Okay. That sounds good. Yeah. We don't mind if you speed up a bit, too. <laughs> All right. Um, bridge now.
Could we track a line uh, going 0 0.3 knots at bearing 230? Thank you. Dr. Val, how much of what we're looking at is sediment versus uh, still, you know, uh, lava? We're, uh, you um, know. The sediment's picking up quite a bit here. I think we're transitioning out of the lava sequence and onto uh, uh, whatever is uh, capping the seamount, be that carbonate or uh, uh, sediments or, um, you know, whatever we, whatever we have, manganese crusts. Thank you. Lots and lots of sea stars. <laughs> Yeah, anytime we get close in, I see uh, lots of sea stars. I can, I can see some animal trackways, too. Yeah, I see those as well. Yeah. Are those, would those be bioturbations or? Yes. Okay. Wait, where do you see? Uh, it's out of the, it's out of the frame now, but oh, okay. there's uh, some sort of an animal trackway that, that we could see with making some squiggly lines. Mm, squiggly lines. Yes. Looks like there's tracks. quite a few, yeah. It could, yeah. Be, it could be snails, could be the could be sea cucumbers, star even starfish, huh? Mm-hmm. What would mm -hmm. trawling lines look like again? Or yeah, trawling scars? Um the trawling scars are usually they're they're very straight. Uh, straight across unless you'll see multiple. Um they can have the bouncing form. Well, that sea star in the back there looks like about three quarters of a unit. <laughs> <laughs> really, I would have said I one concur. quarter of a unit. <laughs> it, it's got length. Yeah. Got to bulk up, buddy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah one, one of the hints that it's much more sedimented here, uh, besides the textural change, is that you're seeing far fewer uh, corals, yeah. which need that, that harder substrate to... Uh, 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 kind of stick themselves to, you know, they, they, they can't really get a good hold fast going on uh, uh, smaller rubble or uh, sediments. But as we come across fields where there is a little bit of harder substrate, uh, like we're about to right now, you can see where uh, that uh, coral and sponge density picks up a little bit. Yeah, there it is. So we'll probably see this kind of alternating environment for a little while yet. It's mm -hmm. my guess. It's not that yeah, um, it's not that lighter color of sediment that we've seen on other seamounts. It's uh, you know still looks to have I don't know if it's manganese encrusted or if there are some just a mix of nodules or if it's kind of concreted in there. Yeah, it's hard to say. I think there's a lot of rubble sitting on top of some finer sediments. But oh, yeah, like. I can't tell if that's like a surface, like surface coating, surface deposition that's making it look darker and it's lighter underneath, or if that's the actual color of the sediment. Hmm. Got a tumbled down sponge. That's interesting. Anything uh, sampled up here would it would it give yield any useful information about um, formation of the seamount, or is it um, just going to be too late uh, in the in that process of kind of to tell any story of early formation? Yeah, I'm not really sure. Um, if there is any igneous outcrop up here, um, which is not necessarily uh, known since. Uh, uh, it's not uncommon to have uh, carbonate caps on geos. Um, I've not really done much work from the tops of uh, 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 much geology involving the tops of geos, so I'm, I'm not like you know I'm not super f uh, sure about uh, uh, what we'd pick up here even. Sure. Um, yeah. Uh, if there is any igneous outcropping up here, yeah, that could give us uh, some information about some. Uh, particularly late stage activity, like some of the last gasps of volcanism potentially. And uh, that can definitely help uh, tell some of the story of the volcano. But um, it's a little bit tougher in my field when it comes to uh, things like carbonates, if that's what you're picking up. 
uh, that, that would end up telling probably a little bit more of the story of uh, um, some of those secondary processes that uh, uh, become more dominant um, as the geo shuts down. And uh, I haven't done a whole lot with uh, carbonate geochemistry, so I don't really have a lot of insight there, unfortunately. Yeah, it's, sure. it's a great question. I just don't have a particularly good answer. Oh, thank you for that. Okay, and that sound you guys just heard was definitely a marker. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I had a moment of, what was that? <laughs> no, you're all good. <laughs> I didn't realize it was, it was a very cool. loud marker. Did, yeah. did we, have we passed Zoom terrain? In. Oh, go ahead, Robert. Oh, zooming yeah, in. Zooming in. Yeah. Yeah. Have we passed terrain like this on the other two seamounts that we've dove on? It, it doesn't look familiar to me. That's why I'm asking. Uh, I think we've seen some rubbly terrain, but nothing quite this dense. Yeah. And that is an enormous shrimp. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a couple. Um, there's a couple shrimp that have those very long, long legs like that. I think. Um, Would you say a unit of a shrimp? Yes. <laughs> One could say that this is a unit of a shrimp. <laughs> yeah, I think. Okay, zoom out. Okay. Awesome, yeah. I think uh, it could be a, a Caridian, uh shrimp, potentially a nematocarcinidae, which I've seen regularly. Um, not not regularly on this seamount um, that I've looked into it, but uh, the long legs are, are pretty characteristic. Um, oh wow, that is a big sea star. Yes. Oh, another yes. unit. It's like a <laughs> one point five unit. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. That is the most Patrick-like starfish uh, sea star I've seen yeah, in a while. Yeah, let's go. Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, SpongeBob. <laughs> yeah. uh, you do that well. <laughs> I share a lot in common with Patrick, actually. <laughs> I probably share a lot in common with SpongeBob, so <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we make a great team. We sure do. <laughs> <clears throat> Just uh, so the internet knows, we uh, on purpose give the data logger the loudest keyboard on the ship <laughs> be because we love your comments about it. So keep them coming. Um, Sorry, I, 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 I like. <laughs> You're fine. No, I love oh. reading them, Kukui. It's a it's a highlight of my watch. Yeah. As sure. a mechanical keyboard enthusiast myself, I like it. There you go. Aw, thank you. We want you to know how hard our data loggers are working so yeah. that you don't think that you have to identify everything for us. <laughs> and uh, you know that uh, they're busy doing it, getting it into the system for science. We, we love your IDs, though. Thank you. Keep sending them in. But uh, just in case you're worried, we don't want to stress anybody out. Yeah, don't be concerned. Yeah. We got a great team here in the control van and ashore, incredible scientists ashore, and you are all amazing explorers. So we're going to work together Wonderful. and get it all done. Mahalo, you guys. <laughs> yeah, they all got us kitted out with some pretty nice keyboards up here. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good space. Yeah. It's a nice office, almost as nice as the one I'll have in about 32 minutes on the top deck. <laughs> right, yeah. Watch it be pouring rain when they go outside. <laughs> That'll be okay, too. Wow. It's okay. just... Uh, a little sediment gradient here. Oh, yeah. yeah. There you go. Just such a different feeling and beautiful, still beautiful. Um, so amazing. Yeah, this is Just an area of change. Clear skies for you. Yeah, hey, ah, thank you. Ah, yes. Beautiful. Awesome. Yeah, this is a transitional area, so 
lot of different things to look at here. A lot of back and forth too. Those really dark crinoids too. I think those are crinoids. Yeah, I, yeah. I believe so. Yeah. Um, we've got some bathopathies, some yep. crinoids. We've got a brazingid. Some still some yellow anthemastis. Nope, that was the wrong word. Um, Analopsamia. Um, we've got an anemone. Yeah, here this looks like good. Uh, this used to be a lava flow too. Aridogorgia. Um, so this might be one of those really late stage lava flows. Bamboo. Wow. I wonder if I can get a ID on that. On um, what are we getting an ID on? Oh no, um, um, no, you're good. You're good. I'm just wondering if I can look through the guide and see if there are any dark crinoids like that. Yeah, previous dives we saw some like really deep purple ones, some deep crimson ones. Yeah, it does look like there are. There's at least there are a couple of deep purple. Um, Crinoids in the ID guide. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is nice. This is another another change. Mhm. Mm yeah, this looks kind of lava y here. Mm -hmm. Just looking at uh, the shape of the uh, debris. I guess we do actually still have a bit of a climb left to uh, to fully reach the summit field it's a it's still a couple hundred meters above us yeah so we're, we're trucking a little bit trying to get up there yeah. so that that uh human impact survey is uh definitely high interest absolutely want to thank all the viewers for putting up with some of my silliness. We really do love your comments. Uh, we, we love your participation. We consider you part of the exploration team. And uh, just like to have a little fun, poke a little fun, both with all my amazing colleagues here in the van and, and all of you watching at home. Um, this is just an incredible journey, and uh, I'm, I'm really thankful to be on it with all of you. So please don't take anything I say with uh, even a grain of salt. We're just having a great time together. Yeah. No, it's always excellent to get on this watch with y'all. This is it's always it's always interesting and you know, we're all we're all learning, which is pretty wonderful. Absolutely. From the stories of culture connections to learning how how these wonderful geological formations come about leading to all the biology that we're able to see. I'm so grateful to be able to learn so many things from all of you guys mm -hmm. and totally. getting to see the wonderful front row um, put their expertise in. It's, it's beautiful work. It really is. Interdisciplinary, a lot of collaboration, many different backgrounds, many different people. So we are all enjoying what we're doing, what we're exploring, and your company. Okay, so yeah, this is some sort of a uh, contact between Ooh, sediments whoa. and a lava flow. Some lava. So we're, we're seeing some late stage stuff here. Lava the lava. Sure do. But we're starting to see more and more sediment, I think. So this is a uh, just that volcano. Good for us. Uh, vol vol Vulcan sediment. What was the? Oh, uh, volcano the sedimentary. Yeah, volcano um, sedimentary. I, I was close. I don't volcano think so. I think I think this is part of a flow here. Okay. Is it the post erosional volcanism thingy? Um, poss possibly, but we can't say for sure. Um, that that's something that has to be defined. Uh, uh, geochemically but it's and it's a little hard to tell from the field relationships um, okay. but yeah uh, it's, it's quite possible it could be 
And so you, fo so like isotope work? Uh, isotope okay. and like trace element okay. geochemistry. Wow. That's a really big, uh, either crinoid cool or feature. brisingid. Yeah. No, I th yeah, I thought it was a brisingid, but I could be right. I, I might have mis mis seen it. Is yeah, so. Right in the center right there, yeah. Yeah, so uh, post-erosional, it's also known as rejuvenated. Uh, volcanism was originally defined as uh, volcanism that occurs like at the very tail end of uh, uh, activity of a seamount, and uh, uh, usually to, def uh, well, often to define that, um, at least using the older definition, uh, we would want to see uh, that lava erupting on top of um, on top of basically sediments. You'd want to see evidence of uh, uh, the volcano starting to erode before those lavas were emplaced. So you're, you're looking for sort of a, an unconformable contact there. Yeah. And uh, uh, it's uh, these days the parlance is uh, more leaning toward uh, rejuvenated volcanism because obviously the more we learn, the more these uh, these gray areas kind of come into play. Um, but it, it's it's basically that same very last stage. So I, I think it's been found in some examples that uh, uh, this this very late stage of volcanism uh, can be identified w through some geochemical indicators, but uh, doesn't necessarily always have that uh, that uh, erosional gap present. Mm. We, there, there, it often is, but um, sometimes that can be very difficult to establish in the field relationships. And then, uh, yeah, in order in order to capture that transition properly, um, you need to have um, a, a lot of samples throughout the entire sequence of the volcano um, to to define it. And that's that's been done pretty well out in the uh, Hawaiian volcanoes, uh, the Hawaiian Islands. Sorry, uh, but um, n not everywhere. So like there, there's some of, some of the hot spots uh, south of here uh, in the Cook Australs. We, uh, you know, there, there's been a little bit of work. Uh, oh, wow. On on uh, to some degree on that, but not it's not been really well defined. And uh, even along uh, the Northwest Hawaiian Ridge, which we're just uh, north of right now, uh, that that work is only just starting to be done uh, by a friend of mine. It's a Northwest Hawaiian Ridge expert. Oh, thank you, Val. Mahalo, Dr. Val. Rejuvenated volcanism. Yep. I, I mean, the terms are still used interchangeably, so. Uh, no, I, no. I, I want to be. I want to be most current in the lingo. <laughs> I want people to think I actually know what <laughs> what's going on. So, would you say rejuvenated volcanism is more? kind of like an umbrella general term than um, post-erosional volcanism? Um, I kind of use the two the same way. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. But, um, I mean, you, you still hear both um, as, as jargon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, fun fact, UH Manoa is built on top of some rejuvenated uh, lava flows known as the Honolulu Volcanics. <laughs> nice. Do those uh, extend throughout the Ahupua of Waikiki and, and uh, kind of across multiple valleys or is it kind of isolated just in that area where the campus is? Um, you know, I actually don't have a good, a uh, good map in my head of their extent. Um, I'll have to go look that up, but I know you can see some rejuvenated lava flows out at uh, uh, out in the northeast uh, if you're, say, driving from uh, uh, campus and going around uh, uh, like Hawaii Kai up uh, heading toward uh, Waimanalo. Yeah. You, yeah, you can yeah. see some, uh, you can see some, a uh, couple, couple of those beaches, I think uh, Sandy's is it? Sure. Uh, Love it. It has a couple of lava flows Let's that I go. believe are related to the rejuvenated stage. Oh, wow. And then uh, uh, there's also an ex uh, an explosive component of uh, the rejuvenated stage volcanism on Oahu um, that formed uh, the uh, uh, Diamond Head. That's covering. what I was going to ask hey, if Leahi? kind of uh, if Ka'au Crater and uh, Leahi and Diamond Head and Cocoa Head and Hanauma 
you know, if the punch bowl, if these were what could be considered rejuvenated, if they were sort of opened up at a later stage uh, yeah. from the main volcanoes. And yep, bang okay. on with that. Hey, I'm learning, slowly, but yeah, learning. Those we think are uh, phreatic eruptions, and there's some field evidence for that, um, which basically means that uh, this, this was, uh, uh, prior to eruption, this, the, those were pockets of magma that interacted with the water table. And uh, anything hot and molten, molten that interacts with uh, water equals explosion. Wow. You can actually see some beds if you, uh, uh, if you uh, go over to, let's trying to remember where it is. It's not Hanama Bay, it's one of the other ones. I think it's just outside of Cocoa Head. Um, you, you can find some ash deposits uh, pretty close to uh, the beach, the water line there. And you can see that uh, some some of those beds have uh, little uh, little spherical looking things in them. And those are, um, uh, oh crap, I just forgot the term. I had it and I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting late. We're, uh, yeah. we're, we're nearing that midnight marker, a uh, witching hour and and, uh, oh, what's but yeah, that? you, you can see some evidence of um, uh, some water, magma, lava interaction in some of those ash deposits there. I remember, um, and I take field trips out there with students. Oh, uh, cool. I remember um, during the 2000, was it 19 uh, Kilauea eruption? 18? 2018. 2018. And I remember there were um, people running boat tours to go watch the eruption oh from the God. ocean, and one that. of them. One of them took a massive stone right through the um, the cover and, and, and onto the back deck of their uh, tour boat oh my uh, gosh. that had been thrown into the air because I think a water, a, a, some an underground pond or aquifer had got tapped and just... I, mean, I, think, it was, I think it was some lava water interaction. Lava at water that ocean interaction, entry. yeah. And they were, they were much closer than they should have been. Yeah, they were. They were. They got in a little bit of trouble for that. But uh, fortunately, yeah. fortunately, no one was killed and, and nobody yeah. seriously injured, but uh, could have been much worse. Yeah, the damage to that, that boat looked <laughs> a little frightening. Yeah. A little crumpled. Yeah. Yeah. Kilauea it often erupts gently, but sometimes that's not the case. And, you know, there, there are a bunch of old Hawaiian stories about um, explosive eruptions, but that wasn't really something acknowledged by Western science until just, you know, within the last few decades. Yeah, it's true. So you gotta, you know, we think, we think oh, they're gentle, and mostly they are. Looking, looking at Atlanta. Oh, Wait, it just it just went up. It's like to the top right, I think. Uh, I missed it. Yeah, I saw the shadow of it. I don't know if it was or not. What was it? I thought it was an octopus. A double oh. octopus, or it was like it was towards the top of a rack. I just I just saw the glimpse of it in the Atlanta camera. Good spot. Put it in the record. Mystery octopus. Zach, we actually had a question come in online about, uh, you know, how these ROVs are working together. They're, they're curious how often and, and how much are you on the winch? Are you on, you know, taking cable in as we, uh, as we climb? Are you having to do that on a pretty regular basis? And, and how do you make that decision? Does, um, does Robert just give you an elbow and say, winch up, winch yeah. up? <laughs> Not very no. often. Uh, <laughs> usually it's just we have to keep it within certain... Uh, meters of it from each other because yeah. uh, uh, I have to give him so much leash I guess we would call it and uh, you know if he pulls it, if he goes too far from it I have to come down a little bit and gives him a little bit more leash but at a certain point um, I, I can't do too much and I have to let him know hey uh, you're at the end of your leash yeah. so he has to let 32 me 32 meters of yeah 32 meters yeah. so okay. yeah he's a, usually let the uh, Atalanta to catch up to him or uh, he has to back up a little bit and let um let the leash kind of loose a little bit and uh yeah and i do have to winch up and down periodically and just have to pay attention to it yeah just to kind of dep depends where the ship uh, is right that's a catalina's been getting the ship in the right position for you guys to make those maneuvers mm -hmm. and then uh you're responding to distance from distance from hercules and uh overall depth yes sir tricky you guys are awesome mm-hmm mm -hmm. 
And I really do hope you get to also just enjoy uh, the amazing things you're bringing to us as you pilot around. Videographer 2 and Navigator 2, it's, uh, they're working so hard. We're, a lot of us are have the privilege of getting to sit and watch the screen as they take us on this ride. It's pretty awesome. This looks different. It does look different. The house or? Oh, or the, no, the, the sediment. The <laughs> yeah, it's a unique halosaur. The answer sure. is yes. Okay. Every halosaur is special. Do you want me to try to zoom in on it? Yeah, see if you can see it. Okay. Oh, he might have, I think he moved out of the way a little bit. Oh, you're still seeing the... Yeah. yeah he, he was over in the top corner for a second, and he just got out of the view. Yeah, so we're seeing a little less rubble here and a lot more of those calcareous looking sediments. Yeah, kind of what he, we were he expecting. He went out. away. Okay, it's full light on Alana. Okay, I'm zooming in on her. So is this iron oxide, the, the more orange colored rock thing here? Uh, probably partly, yeah. It's just rusting out here, huh? Yeah, we've been seeing that on uh, some of the rocks where the manganese crusts are thinner, um, especially if they've been sitting in sediment. So, um, yeah, that, that's probably at least partly related to iron. Could be some sort of other, uh, uh, I don't know, like some sort of a desert pavement-ish polish, I don't know. Oh, look at that view. You go to Luihi and it's iron everywhere. Yeah, I bet. You see that too in uh, 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 Kilauea Caldera. Like if you go down to, if you do the uh, Kilauea Iki hike. Love that one. Uh, the 1955 one. Yeah, you can actually go slightly off trail and uh, walk right up to the old vent where uh, a lot of that eruption uh, uh, had concentrated itself too while that lava lake was active. And all of those rocks over there are um, uh, much redder than the rest of the lake. Oh, interesting. And a lot of that has to do with just uh, the concentration of higher temperatures there and uh, 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 conditions that led to, um, yeah, more trackways there. Wow. Uh, conditions that led to a uh, greater oxidation of those rocks. So um, as they oxidize, sometimes they, uh, you know, it's pretty common for uh, basalts to turn a little bit more red in uh, uh, the Hawaiian system. So yeah, that's uh, that's how you can map out an old uh, an old vent on Kilauea. One way too, anyway. Yeah, the Kilauea Iki hike is just amazing. That is, that is such a great hike. I love it. Take your water. Just yes. Hot. Yeah. Once you get down onto the uh, the floor of the lava lake, there's there's no shade. And that's the that's the hike that's in the national park. Yeah. And it does yeah. start. Yeah. Right yeah. near the r right near the um, main crater. Yeah, there are a few good hikes in uh, Volcanoes National Park, and that's that one is pretty spectacular. All right. If you look around the Mental rim, note. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you look around the the rim, and you can go off trail and take a look at that too, uh, you can see what looks like a bathtub ring uh, around a large portion of that uh, the the wall of the lava lake. The rangers and volcanoes are some of my favorite um, out of all the national parks I've been to. I've been to many, but. Uh, We've got some of the best in Hawaii, and they'll be happy happy to point anyone in the in the right direction, where you can go reverently and go safely to experience uh, Pele at, at at her finest. It's pretty mm -hmm. awesome. There's also some other ancient lava flows out in Kona site, I believe, and if you go to Kolokohonokohau National Historic Park, uh, you can kind of go on the trails that they have over there, and uh, one of them is. Um, the Mamalahua Highway, um, oh, and yeah. there's also the Alakahakai Trail. Um, yeah, it takes you through a lot of those um, ancient lava flows as well when Pele visited um, uh, Hualalai. Oh, wow. Yeah, there's a, 
I think I see a giant sea star shaped. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 How many print. units? Oh, oh, wow. A couple <laughs> units. Yeah, leave his bed. star print. <laughs> oh, my go? gosh. That's awesome. Well, something grabbed it. You can see something. Yeah. <laughs> Sugar below it. Oh, no, Patrick. Oh. <laughs> Lost. Don't ask me about the time scales involved there, because I have yeah. no concept of that. That is interesting. Yeah, once you get up toward Hualalai, too, you can find some uh, uh, lava flows right by the road uh, that are publicly accessible, and those have uh, uh, something called xenoliths in them. Xenoliths? Yeah. And uh, those are coming from... Uh, th th so xenoliths mean alien rock. These are rocks that are that did not come from the same place as the lava that carried them. Uh, these are often, uh, is that a C pen? Yeah, that is a C pen. Can we get a zoom on this C pen? Zoom in. Okay. It's a beauty. That is. Yeah, these uh, lava flows carry pieces of some of the lowermost uh, crust of the Earth. Oh. And they also sample a little bit of the upper mantle uh, lithosphere, uh, lithospheric mantle, there we go, uh, as well. And uh, you can spot them in these lava flows because the uh, uh, lithospheric mantle xenoliths are bright green because they're almost entirely uh, olivine. Oh. oh, I was going to say, are they... Do they represent them, but they're technically yeah. olivine? Yeah, so oh, you're, you're sampling okay. a little bit of uh, Earth's interior, which we have yet to make it down to with a, with a drill. So the green sand beach, Papakolea, Papakolea, on Big Island, is that a bunch of xenoliths too? Um, in that case, no. Um, that's, that's from olivine that's crystallized out of uh, a lava flow somewhere up section. Okay. And uh, uh, those got transported to that beach. Oh. Okay. So beautiful. I love that beach. But same mineral, yeah. Oh, but they're just slightly made differently. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, the green sand beaches probably are from olivine crystallizing out of the lava itself. Um, the the Hualalai xenoliths are um, uh, actually cool bits fish. of mantle, and you can see like these, these chunks of like green crystalline stuff uh, just embedded in in these lavas. It, it's very striking. Yeah. And yeah, you, you get to pick one of those up and say, hey, this is a piece of the mantle. Oh. One That's place trippy. we will never be able to actually go and explore directly. Yeah, it looks like another a fitted, a fitted day. Cusk eel? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is that's that right? I think so, right? yeah. Um, that was me guessing, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd it go? May or may not have seen another green thing. <laughs> ah, the, green <laughs> the elusive thing. green thing. The green thing. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Val, definitely a question coming in online from you. Felsic volcanic eruptions under the sea, are they relatively rare? Hmm. Um, hard to say. So much going so on under the sea we, we do haven't see, seen yet. We do see some evolved compositions that erupt out occasionally. Um, there's a... <laughs> One of my colleagues has a favorite rock from uh, Samoa that he's done almost every isotope system possible on it. Uh, that one is uh, an andesite, which is not not necessarily uh, uh, felsic. It's uh, intermediate in composition, but um, yeah, we do get we do get andesites occasionally. Uh, yeah, um, occasionally there there is the odd hot spot, a handful of them out there that will erupt. Uh, something called uh, trachytes or phonolites. It's pretty rare, but you do get those. And um, I, I know those occur um, in terrestrial settings, like on, on uh, like subaerial settings like islands. Um, I would have to, I'd have to go double check the little 
database thing I have. Um, uh, see if any of those are uh, submarine erupted, but yeah, it's, I, I can't see why not. You'll just see a uh, fewer of them. Right. There are um, rhyodacites uh, that you can find an outcrop uh, on Oahu up on uh, uh, Waianae. Oh, okay. So That's cool. It's just not submarine. But. I'm just going to need a list of all these places. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Plan my little vacation oh, around the rocks. Oh, look at that guy. <laughs> oh, cool, Jerry. Yeah. All right. Dr. And, Val uh, making new rock lovers. Good. Rock finders. We need more marine geochemists, please. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are not that many of us at the moment, so uh, yeah. If you're ever interested in doing this kind of stuff and uh, you know, picking up rocks and putting them into Herc's pocket. I love it. Yeah. Just as a point of clarification, before I sign off, a fit a day cusk eel. Not actually an eel. It's a family of fish. Is it a family? A fit a day is family. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think we've lost our I'm not, biologists. I'm not going to get. I'm not going to get a verification right now. But you can Google it uh, <laughs> if you're online at home. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. This is eight to twelve watch. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna hand it over to the amazing twelve to fours. They're gonna do their best to give you as wonderful of a show as we did, and uh, we'll miss you. We'll we'll see you uh, next time. Next time we're in the water on eight to twelve. Aloha. This is Daniel Kinzer signing off. Mahalo kiho, ahui ho. Ahui ho, All right, good night, folks.
Okay, we're situated. Off you go. Sure. Sorry, I'm just... Oh no, it's fine. Okay, Jacob, you can come back down. Come down to it. Make your head two three zero as well when you get a chance. Fast enough for you? Light speed. them in there if you want to. Keep your head, Jacob, at 230. So while we're tracking a line, uh, make it easy for you. So your heading is the same as the ship's heading. So the uh, well, when we're tracking a long line like this, if Atlanta keeps its heading on the same as the ship's heading, then Hercules job is to stay in the proverbial box there so right now hercules is in the middle of the box so everything's trucking down the road right so you can kind of explore around but if you stay in that box then while the whole mess is moving constantly it, uh, <coughs> that keeps our hercules out front and some tether in the bank so we can stop and do a quick zoom if we want and then but keep going because we have about 30 seconds before Atlanta's over Hercules and then maybe another 30 to 60 seconds somewhere and then uh, after that we're behind so we have no you know we're on negative tether in the bank if you hit uh, G on your little buttonoid there this one oh it's a little bit low Ooh. I think we'll end the dive a little maybe a little less than a thousand meters deep That's a 0230 off the bottom? Yeah, I'm going to do a calculation here. Zoom in there, Gina. Yeah, I think it'll take us about an hour maybe to get up but yeah we wanted to ascend i think at 2 30 is a good time that's my understanding yep then we can get everything organized and back in its place before we go to bed all right well for folks watching welcome to the middle watch midnight to four usually but we'll be the last watch on the top of this seamount
Yeah, hello everyone. Nice to be joining all okay, of you. Okay, go ahead. Thanks. On the 12 to 4 watch. And um, if we have a moment, we'll go around and do some quick introductions just so everyone knows um, which team members are in the room. Um, I'll start off again. My name is Kara, and I'm the Science Communication Fellow. Yes, please. Um, yeah, uh, 10 meter boxes. Um, I'm the Science Communication Fellow, and uh, my yeah, role here is mm -hmm. to help share some of the science that's going on on the Nautilus. And when I'm not here, I serve as um, a biologist and educator at the Guam Coral Reef Initiative. And with that, I'll go ahead and pass it to my right. Uh, Hans, would you like to introduce yourself? Good morning, everyone. I'm Hans van Tilburg. I'm a maritime archaeologist and historian for NOAA's Office of National Marine Sanctuaries. And it's my pleasure to assist the geology and biology missions. And we're on the middle watch, also called Dead Man's Watch, by the group. <laughs> Usually midnight to 4 a.m. Uh, I think that we'll be off bottom a little earlier in the map. Welcome. And Upashana. Hi, uh, I am Upashana Ganguly. I am a deep sea biologist studying the evolution of a group of octocorals. I'm currently a PhD student uh, in the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. And I am the biologist, uh, I'm one of the biologists in the team. And it is a great, great pleasure to be on these dives and getting to explore okay, these uh, sea mounts in real time. And with this, I'll pass on to Taylor Ann. Hello, I'm Taylor Ann. I am the science manager. Uh, and I'm data logging back here, taking all observations of everything that we're seeing on the dives. Um, when I'm not on the Nautilus, I'm a research assistant and project manager at UCLA and still discovering what I want to do with my future in my life. Uh, <laughs> so um, this is a great. Uh, opportunity to be here and I'm really looking forward to what we see on the last two hours of this dive. I'll pass it on to Mia. Thanks Taylor Ann. My name is Mia. I'm serving as a navigator on this trip. This is my, oh there's a bunch of star, sea stars. That's <laughs> what I like to do, <laughs> point out the sea stars. Uh, but uh, this is my second time on Nautilus. Um, my background's in geospatial and technical analysis. Awesome. I've been doing that for about 15 years, and maybe this is a new career transition for me. Uh, I'm happy to be here, and I'm learning a lot. So I appreciate working with everyone here, and I will pass it on to Dan. I'm Dan, sitting in the heart chair. I live here on Nautilus. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Okay. Go ahead. Jacob. And I'm from Ever Beach, Oahu, and I'm the ROV engineering intern piloting Atalanta. Aloha, I am Jaina. I am from Hilo, Hawaii, and I am the video engineer intern on this watch. Um, Gina, can you repeat it? It was a little uh, quiet. Oh, sorry, let me speak up. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, aloha, my name is Jaina. I am from Hilo, Hawaii, and I am the video engineer on this watch. Happy to be here. Awesome, and we'll bring it back around to Elsie. Thanks, Kara, Ali, and good morning, good evening. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Elsie, and I am an assisting scientist here on the Nautilus. And uh, while I'm not on Nautilus, I'm a researcher at the Palau International Coral Reef Center. And it's been a really exciting dive. We've seen a lot, so excited to see what we'll round off um, this seamount with. Great. Uh as we are trying to make our way to the top of the sea mound, we have been passing some very uh, beautiful Analopsamia uh, coral colonies. Uh, there's a brisingent sea star right in view. We passed over, sorry, there's a basket star. Sorry, it's 12 in the morning. We are all uh, uh, come up. 
a bit sleep deprived. Okay. And we did pass over multiple very beautiful Brissendjids, definitely uh, two different, two distinct taxa. Uh, one more whitish and mar one more of the reddish color. There was a Goniasterid sea star, a couple of glass sponges, one was a few of them were Euplectellids in the genus Euplectella. Uh, while there was also some ferrate sea sponge, uh, glass sponges. Right. Uh, what else did we see? Uh, there are some bamboo whips, bamboo coral whips that we have been passing over as well. So it's, it's been interesting as usual so far and hopefully we'll continue like this and we'll try to make our okay, way go ahead. as close to the top as possible. Thanks for that recap, Pupasana. Mm -hmm. I thought you were sleep deprived on our last watch. What's <laughs> up? <laughs> it's just that I'm having yeah, a little difficulty moving. sleeping and mm. it will be fine. Put in a, like a hundred meter move. You want to catch that before the uh, boat stops, so. Okay, zoom in. What's this covering on this glass coral? Uh, this, gla uh, this is a dead glass sponge, so uh, that's why okay. the color. Yeah, it's this dead tissue yeah, that's right. giving it the brownish color. Okay, go ahead. If you want to see anything in particular, Epson, I'd just let me know. Okay. Thank you. Or circle it on the... Mm -hmm. Ooh, purple. Purple. <laughs> <laughs> Jinx. Okay, <laughs> pause it. You're like, woo, you're zooming past? No purple. <laughs> Let's turn. <laughs> uh, wow. To go, yeah, I would say. Or at least that is the only purple octocoral that I'm familiar with, other than the Stolodiferin. So yeah, same. From, right? Yeah. So Victor Gorgia with the crinoid and Ophirides, and we can be back on our track. I can never hear her. You want to see the one in the back? Sorry. Uh, no, we are fine. We can continue. Moving on. Up, so five, up five, please, Jacob. Did anyone have a chance to talk to Virginia to see what we're looking for? I know for the trawling, um, she showed me examples on more of a, a not a non-rocky bottom. Does anyone know what we might see on a rocky bottom like this versus a sediment? Uh, no. And you hold the delta around 20. Yeah, just briefly, you know, um, tracks, yep. but Keep this the is a different environment than impacts from trawls that I've seen, like you, Mia, in, in sediment in other places. Yeah. Shoals off of New England, oh, the I'm Mississippi there, Delta, sorry. whatnot. It'll come back around, just leave it on auto heading there. Yes, I'm also not sure how trawling marks how trawling leaves behind, wha uh, what kind of uh, tracks or trails trawling leaves behind on rocky substrates, on softer sediments. It's Jane, can you adjust her volume a bit? I can barely hear. Well, we're cruising up to waypoint seven, so hopefully, and if there's anything in the video, people can review later and maybe find New indicators. Yes, yes. And I'm sure people know about it. It's just that I should have asked Virginia that question. Yeah, I meant to ask. 
I did ask, but I thought it would be a, uh, I didn't think about the rocky bottom. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. I didn't think about the rocky bottom. Normally I asked. Yeah, I asked as well. Okay. I mean, there could be disrupted mm -hmm. communities. There could be disruption in, in, in the rocks. Good, good. And, yeah. Okay. I haven't seen that. Yeah, that's a beautiful eupleptiller, different kind for sure. And the crinoid is just sitting on the edge and using to perch itself up. But the sponges, the bottom of it is... Uh, There's a chrysogorgia at the bottom of it, and the brown tissue would be partially dead sponge tissue. So it can... It dies from the bottom up like that? Yeah, so I think it's, uh, it's actually dying from the bottom up, probably. I mean, the upper part of the sponge is still alive, but the tissue more at the base is... Uh, dead at yeah. this point. I feel like that some days. <laughs> striking. <laughs> yes, that's very good. That's that's okay. beautiful observation. Yeah. In the family you plectelid, but I'm not sure about the genus. Yeah, probably. Uh, no, no. We're passing yeah. sea stars. Yes, yes. <laughs> there are lots of sea, sea yeah. stars, actually. I saw a lot of, when we were, when we were doing the mm -hmm. shift change, it just was like a sea of Yeah, this brittle. bed of sea stars. And yeah, really. I like the little chunkier ones, though. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> the ones look like Patrick. Oh. <laughs> what do sea star spotters make annually? Uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't figured out my rate yet. Okay. We typically charge for that. Yeah, I mean, and you know, brittle stars seem to be more in abundance, you know, <laughs> than, and then there's the basket stars, so, in different colors, <laughs> a pink one maybe uh, costs a little more than a white one. Have you ever, Mia, had it, because you were an Okeanos, uh, have you, did you ever get a chance to interact with Chris Ma? Uh, with who? Hmm? With Chris who? Chris Ma. No. So he uh, has been on, sev I think, several Okeana stars, but he is a Kynodome specialist, a sea star specialist at uh, the Smithsonian. And uh, he's generally more on top of the Okeana stars. And whenever there is a sea star, he always calls in to ID <laughs> them. And it is the, the loveliest to always <laughs> chat with him. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> when I was in the Okeanos, it was just a, a mapping dive. Mm -hmm. So, oh, okay. Yeah, it was yeah. pretty small uh, group of people on the ship. I think after him, you are the one who is most excited about <laughs> seeing sea stars. I think it's because when I was little, we I would go to Hilton Head, South Carolina, once a year with my family, mm -hmm. and I always got excited when I saw starfish mm -hmm. on you know that were on the on the on the beach or in tidal. Uh, little tidal tide pools um, and also sand dollars. So I haven't oh. really seen sand dollars. So um, I think that's why I have an affinity towards sea stars. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a brisingid and a couple of faded sponges with a hemicorallium perched on top. And we see some chrysogorgias in the background. And Dan, just put up the still camera if you guys see that. Yep. Technically, my role here is, is watch lead, but I'm fortunate to have an extremely competent watch <laughs> in the front row. And my Look real my real importance is I, I'm operating the still cam. I push the button. Uh, there's a fat that one. That is, yes, yeah. another going to ask her. That's a big. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I don't know, like $5 of spotting. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. We'll go bankrupt. I, I mean, I hope Nautilus is good for it. <laughs> it's just the way. Oh, it's, it's the other way around. You have to pay us. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you didn't get that part, did you? 
It was a white sea star, but like a chunky one. Yeah, it, it's in the f it would be in the family Goniaster, it is. <coughs> Probably a Goniaster as well. And for those of you who have just tuned in, <laughs> we currently are looking at an unnamed sea mount oh. in Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. Um, we're heading towards the summit. Uh, this is towards the end of the dive, so we're almost there. And this sea mount is located about 100 nautical miles north of the Northwest Hawaiian Ridge. Um, so it's the most northwestern sea mount in Papahanaumokuakea. So. Um, we've been seeing some pretty amazing things closer to the bottom of the summit. There was some really no, huge corals. I want to cover it. Around. Okay, you can lots, go away. Lots of pink corals. Um, we saw octopus earlier, so um, expecting to see some more life here. Thank you so much for tuning in, and uh, feel free to let us know your questions in the comment box um, on nautiluslive.org. Octopus. Oh, oh my gosh. That's a, I think it's wow. because I just mentioned the octopus. <laughs> you made it. <laughs> <laughs> that is a big one. That is a big one. That's the third one we've seen. Yes. Oh my gosh. That's the second. Cirata. And I think we just have, this board just has to say the word octopus yes. and then this one we'll magically appears on the screen. <laughs> octopus, 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 octopus. Wow. <laughs> I almost spilled coffee, see? <laughs> Bro, look at the Atalanta camera. It's your big ears. It is oh, a you, big yeah. fellow. A beautiful octopus. Such a beautiful one. This is so great. A, way, a great way to end our evening. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Aww. Oh, it's going it's to start. Off. Yeah, it's going to start swimming. <laughs> I think the whole room started <laughs> after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're all awake now. Wow. Yeah. Makes it especially easy to. Do my job up here. <laughs> <laughs> we all yell at you. <laughs> uh, no, it's beautiful. Oh, and there's another little sea star. Sea star in the <laughs> back. It's like a perfect frame for you, Mia. It's too easy. We need to manifest a dolphin or maybe a sperm. <laughs> a dolphin at this <laughs> Okay. Please can see a dolphin cut the at chatter down just a idea. couple notches, please? So yeah. That is a beautiful observation. And wow. it's as it's slowly sh showing us it's grand deal. Is this the same kind we saw earlier? Because the tentacles seem a bit different. 